So quick, quick question for the audience. How many of you booked your travel here by going into a travel uh, agent's office? Okay, now how many of you used an online tool to book your travel? Cool. So I think that's uh, only fitting in the world that, as Jonathan described yesterday, where everything is, is on the web and powered by cloud, that we get to hear from Rajiv Khanna, who's Vice President of Infrastructure for Expedia, the world's largest online travel agency. So come on out. Let's hear what he's going to say. Good morning. How you guys doing? All right, let's try it again. Good morning. Yeah, that's much better. At least I know everybody's awake. So I want to talk to you about all the cool things that we're doing at Expedio with OpenStack and how we are speeding up innovation and how we're getting faster to the market. To start with, a little bit more about Expedia. Expedia is made up of various different brands that we, that we own across the world. And we are one of the largest or the largest online travel agency in the world. So I'm sure you've seen some of these brands and have used those. And if you haven't, I encourage you guys to go try it out. Across these brands, we operate 150 sites in 70 different countries in various different languages. We get about 60 million unique customers that visit us on a monthly basis. You can shop 365,000 hotels and over 400 airlines on our sites. And we have 14,000 employees distributed across 30 countries. All this is really good stuff. Everybody loves numbers. But at the end of the day, technology is at the core of all, all of the things that we do. Like most industries, travel is a very competitive industry. And it's important that we are quick to the marketplace, we are fast, and we have to be very innovative along the way. Otherwise, we lose business. So everybody, I'm sure everybody here has been to a party and participated in conga lines. You don't want to see me do this. It's not pretty. So, but conga lines are not that much fun when it comes to infrastructure, delivering infrastructure. I'm sure you can relate to a lot of this. So here's the infrastructure conga line. In the front, you have data centers. Then you go to racks. You need to have servers. You got to cable them up. And you got to make sure you're keeping track of your assets. Then you got to hook it up to the network. Oh, don't forget to install the operating system. Storage as well. Then you got to in install the application, configure it, get the firewall rules done, get the load balancer rules done, and on and on and on. And this is a pretty common problem that exists across the industry. This isn't an Expedia problem. This isn't conga lines that exist everywhere. And as I said, they're they a lot of fun at parties, but not when it comes to delivering infrastructure. So our goal is to actually get rid of the conga line. The other thing to keep in mind, so what happens when we don't have enough things in place, when we have shortage of certain assets? So what, what's the human nature? You go out and go to a panic buy. I know I have a lot of things that are sitting in my closet, which I thought I needed at some point, but I only needed one, but I, it was available only in the short supply. So guess what? I went out and bought two. And I have a pile of stuff sitting across in my closets that I never use. So what does that look like for the enterprise? It's money. It's real money. So if you think about it, in the data center, you have racks and racks of equipment that's, that's consuming power, cooling, and using up money that is either sitting idle or it's under-consumed. The whole intent for us is to make sure that we get the right efficiencies and we don't want to be wasteful. A few things in your closets may not feel that bad, but if you pile them up and do all the math, it even adds up for you. So think about a scenario. You're a developer. 
you have this brilliant idea that's going to add millions to the bottom line. And now you want to go start developing that against that idea. Oh, but guess what? Get in the back of the conga line. You'll be ready to go in about three weeks, if you're lucky. It may be months in some cases. So asking a developer to put a ticket in is really going to kill the innovation that they want to do and slow them down. And our intent is not to do that. We want to solve for that problem. So when we went out and asked our developers, tell us one thing, what do you want the most? And the response was, we want fast. Not just fast, way fast. And then you can add as many ways in front of the fast, and it's still not good enough, because it has to be somewhat in instantaneous. They want it when they want need it. They want to be able to consume it immediately. There's no need, or there shouldn't be a need for a conga line. And then at the end of the day, all of this matters because we want to be fast to the marketplace. And it adds to our growth, and it adds to our business. So when we started to design this, design a solution based on OpenStack, we, had, we set forward some principles that we want to live with. It has to be friction-free. In order for it to be friction-free, it has to be end-to-end -end automation. It has to be self-service. Once again, we are trying to get rid of those tickets. But at the same time, we are a pretty large consumer of public cloud. It has to support both our internal private cloud as well as a public cloud. And we want to avoid the vendor lock-in, not just from the hardware point of view, for all the software that we consume, the public cloud providers that we consume. Well, we use AWS today, but we may want to change that over time. So we want to have that flexibility. And at the same time, we want to be able to balance the needs of IT with the needs of business. It's obviously all about speed. It's about getting out and being innovative and letting people do what they need to do to be innovative to help grow the business. But at the same time, we don't want to lose control of the entire environment. So we want to find the right balance in control with openness. And in, in most environments, you want, we want to own the business from our, our internal customers. We don't do very well when we go into a conversation about, you must use this, or you must use this offering. So generally speaking, we, talk, we heard about credit card consumption yesterday. People swipe their credit card, and they know what's possible. So we have to have an offering that's competitive to the rest of the environment. So here we are. So when we started, we started this in April of 2013. And when we got started, we needed some help. We needed some partners along the way. We worked with Scalar, and we worked with Marantos. With Scalar, we were able to get integration with a lot of our internal systems. We integrated with Active Directory. We integrated with our ITSM suite, as well as a variety of different deployment tools that we have in-house, along with some of the financial controls to be able to know who's consuming what so we can do showback. And at some point, we may choose to do chargeback to our internal customers. This is this end of the day, this isn't free. And you have to be able to figure out what the total cost is. Along with that, obviously, OpenStack is in the middle of all of this. With OpenStack, we've been able to stand up an internal cloud, along with the option to be able to go to a public cloud. We have a choice. This is all about choices. We have a choice to go to AWS. We can go to Rackspace, we can go to Google, or any of the other public providers that we may choose to use. So when you look at this design, we are able to pretty much, we are able to address all of the print design principles that we had. We have choice, we, are, we have the right level of control, and we are able to consume both internal and external clouds. And it's self-provisioning. And as a developer, or as a consumer of this service, you have an option to interact with this through an API, through a, through a CLI, or if you really choose to, you can use the GUI as well. So what's the outcome? So far, we have three regions stood up, two, two non-production and one production. 
The, the adoption of this platform has gone viral. We have over 20,000 instances that have been stood up to date. And they grow up, go, go up every day. And the way we interact with our development community is a lot different. We interact in a much different way than we did before. There's a lot less noise. There's a lot less tickets that we have to deal with. They are moving much faster. They want to be able to move at the rate of the business. And we are seeing a lot, more a lot better rational behavior. There isn't a lot of hoarding going on. People aren't holding on to the stuff. We are seeing the true natural consumption that we expected out of an elastic compute platform. And we are seeing that. People are creating machines. They're giving, that, giving back machines. Hence, we've been able to grow the environment. And one of the larger problems that we have at the moment is trying to keep up with the capacity on the back end. And that's a good problem for us to have. And the net result of all of this is we are speeding up deployments. We are speeding up the way we do business. And we are obviously adding, as a result of all of that, we are speeding up innovation, which results in better business value. So what's next? We need to stabilize the platform. We've had some issues along the way. We believe we, we are almost there. We've done a lot of work in the US. We are a global company. We want to go global. Back to choices. We want to be able to put this footprint wherever we have presence and where it makes sense for us from a business point of view, but at the same time be able to leverage the Amazon map that was shared before or on, of the other uh, public clouders as necessary. Because we don't think we need to be in every location and every region. And we want to be able to leverage both. We want to enhance the capabilities. We want, to all, we want to offer up database as a service, monitoring as a service, load balancing as a service, firewall as a service, really maturing the platform from an infrastructure as a service to a platform as a service. But we have lots of old stuff, legacy stuff. This is where we run our business today. We have over 30,000 instances of operating system running in the environment. We need to figure out what to do with that. We like all the goodness that we get from the platform. We want to be able to leverage that goodness within our legacy footprint as well. And our application groups have a lot of work to do. They need to be able to, now we've done the, I would say we've done a lot of the uh, heavy lifting up front, but they have a lot of work to do to be able to figure out how to consume this platform. You have to be able to do some re-architecture work. Obviously, anything that's new that's being developed is being developed to this architecture, but we ha still have a lot of old applications and legacy applications that have to be redone. So in closing, I want to thank a, a few folks. I want to thank my team. They've had a lot of uh, hard work over the last several months, and they've, they've worked some, put in some long hours to get us where we are. And I want to thank them. Some of them are here, at least one of them is here, and the others are not. I want to thank our partners. They've been struggling with us along the way as we figure this thing out. And this hasn't been always been easy. And I want to thank the community. A lot of this wouldn't be possible without you guys. So keep going. We think we're just getting started. We have a long ways to go. And once again, thank you very much. <laughs>